to me, when when I when I'm talking with when I'm working with clients who are in a similar situation, I say, listen, we got we got to get your defense on the field here. You got to start playing better defense because offense is great. Offense fills the seats, but defense wins championships. Defense makes you rich. Meaning, and it's very simple: you live below your means and you spend below your means. Easier said than done, obviously. But you know that's why not many people are champions. So you know it does take getting the or putting in the right habits. And, you know, taking out your head trash about money specifically. Hey, it's the Profit Answer Man, Rocky Lalvani. If you're new to the podcast, check out my interview with Mike Michalowicz. It's episode number two. If you want to hear about each chapter in the Profit First book, go back and listen to episodes three through 13. Episode one is the why and how. On The Profit Answer Man, we learn money mastery without all the complicated accounting mumbo-jumbo using a simple system. Your accountant is busy documenting your transactions and creating a rearview mirror of what happened. My guess is you don't even look at the reports they sent you. If you're like most business owners, you struggle with this. And it's not your fault. We aren't taught money in school. And accountants aren't taught how to be profitable. The Profit First system created by Mike Michalowicz works, and he certified me to help you implement the system in your business. Remember, the new equation is sales minus profit equals expenses. Let's face it, without cash flow, you can't pay your employees, buy needed materials, or pay your mortgage and support your family. I help you to do that and more so you can focus on the parts of the business you love and receive the rewards for your labor and investment into your business. The stronger you are as a business owner, the more jobs you create, the better we are as a country. Small business owners are the backbone of America, and for that, you deserve to be well rewarded. Just remember, more revenue does not equal more profit. That's why we focus on the bottom line. Hey, we're doing something new. I'm going to have a live Q&A meeting on Zoom on March 22nd at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. You can join us live and ask your questions. I'll be happy to answer them. If you can't make it that day, email your questions ahead of time and we'll put them in there and we'll answer them for all of you. So hopefully you can join us that day. I'm going to put a link in the show notes with a Eventbrite code so that you can sign up and get notified and have the details for the call. So we hope to see you there on March 22nd. Today, we have another Profit First success story, along with some business wisdom. It really doesn't matter how much your top line is. We care about how much you actually keep. There's a lot of reasons why that money disappears, and we're going to chat about a few of those today. One area that we all need to focus on is us, the business owner. What are the stories we tell ourselves, and how much do we hold ourselves back? That's our topic, how to get rid of our head trash and get our business to grow, because I've said it many times, we are the biggest obstacle to our own business's success. Today, we have Dr. Noah St. John, who is known worldwide as the father of affirmations and the mental health coach to the stars. He's famous for helping his clients make more in 12 weeks than they made in the past 12 months. His clients have added more than $2.7 billion using his methods since 1997. Hopefully, you can have one takeaway to help you pick up another million. Let's meet Noah. Welcome to the Profit Answer Man, Dr. Noah St. John. It's great to have you join us today. Thanks, Rocky. Great to be here. Can you share a little bit about yourself and your business? I'm known for helping entrepreneurs make more in just 12 weeks than they made in the previous 12 months while winning back one to three hours in their day and four to eight weeks per year. And That last phrase is really important because there's a lot of people out there who say they help people make more money 
And their solution is, okay, just work 10 times harder, work 10 times longer, and never see your family, never take vacations, never take a break. Sound good? And you're like, no, that kind of sounds lousy. So no, you know, so yes, of course, we all want to make more money, right? But I mean, isn't it nice to have a life too? So that's why I feel that, you know, one of the things that I teach is, uh, I call it my freedom lifestyle formula, where you have the time, energy, relationships, and money. You know, so it's really a, a, a four phase approach. It's not just uh, looking at just, you know, only the factor of money. As I stated, obviously, money is very important. But, you know, imagine if I gave you a million dollars tomorrow and I said, OK, now the stipulations are you have no time to enjoy it. You got to be miserable all the time. And there's nobody there that you can share it with. How's that sound? <laughs> like, no, that doesn't sound that great, you know. So it, it really is about living the holistic uh, and looking at the whole, uh, not only the business owner, but making sure that we set up your business system so that they serve you rather than you working so hard for your business. And I totally agree with you. And the, on the other podcast where you've been a guest on Richer Soul, that's what we talk about is yeah. the softer side of life. Here, we focus a little bit more on the numbers, but at the same point, we don't want you to work harder. We want you to work mm -hmm. less. And I keep telling mm -hmm. business owners, if you're working that hard, then you're the obstacle in your business. You got to step yeah. out and turn the reins over. Otherwise, you're never going to scale. You're never going to be able to enjoy mm -hmm your money. And that's what this is all about. It's not about money for money's sake. It's about having the money. So you enjoy your business and you enjoy your life and both of them go together. That's right. So you are also a fan of profit first. Mm -hmm. Tell us what was life like okay. before you implemented profit first? Well, I mean, the truth is I really, I wasn't paying myself and I was working hard, working long hours. And, you know, I, I mean, I love what I do. So I wasn't thinking about it too much. And I don't even really remember how I came across Profit First because it's been many years now or several years. And I remember, I, I do remember this though. I was, uh, I found, I had the book and I was uh, on, on a plane trip, you know, going to speak at a seminar in Las Vegas. And I, I read the book in one sitting and I was like, holy cow, this guy's really good. I mean, this makes perfect sense. And I go, oh my gosh, I am, I am just really not doing this. And, and it was really a, a mindset shift for me to, to realize that to, to pay yourself last is not really that smart. You know, and it, it really isn't, it's not, not a great idea. Uh, you know, going back to what I just said a moment ago. So, I mean, you know, we, we all, you know, when you're starting up a business, of course, there's sacrifices that have to be made and you're, you are going to put in a lot of hours. I mean, I remember when I started uh, my company in 1997, so I've been doing this over 25 years now. You know, I, I started in a 300 square foot basement apartment with $800 to my name and a book on HTML. And for those of you listening who don't know what HTML is, you're lucky. Believe me, you don't want to know what HTML is. But anyway, it's what the internet's built on. Let's just put it that way. And I mean, it was like trying to build a house with, you know, two sticks and a rock. I mean, it was like, no. Anyway, so now, of course, the tools are so much easier that we have today. But the point is that I didn't know anything about running a business, but I just had a vision, you know, a, a dream, really, just to help people to make a difference and make an impact around the world. And of course, I wanted to make money, but really that was always secondary for me it was it was about the vision and so you know that's that's all well and good you know but then when you you do need money you know to to fund your dream right you need money and so it, it really was for me a matter of uh because i i really didn't have the right education or the proper you know tools or training i ended up spending over half a million dollars and i i mean which I didn't have, you know, but I, when money would come in, I just pour it right back in the business. You know, I just put it right back in my own education. I, I'd just be learning all, always learning and learning and learning consistently. I hire different, you know, coaches and gurus or whatever, only to find out they can't teach their way out of a paper bag. <laughs> you know, so it took me so long because, and I had to spend so much money because uh, the gurus out there are great at marketing and self-promotion, but they suck at teaching. And that's why, you know, one of the things that appealed to me about Profit First is it was like a step-by-step -step checklist. I'm like, oh, I can do this. And that really helped me. It helped me a lot. How quickly did you implement? 
I mean, instantly when I got home, I implemented it right away. Cause I, I mean, let me put it this way. I teach implementation. So, you know, it would be hypocritical if I didn't implement, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm the, I'm the guy that gets people to do things that they don't even think they can do, you know? And that's why, you know, like we talked about on the other podcast, you know, I'm famous for help, helping my clients get hockey stick growth, you know, like going from 5,000 a month to 75,000 a month, going from 4 million in revenues to 20 million in revenues, like in less than a year, hockey stick. You know, so it's, it would be pretty much, it, would, it wouldn't be really cool if I was like, oh, I'll get around to that later. Let me procrastinate a little bit. Wait a minute. I'm teaching y'all not to procrastinate. Not a great idea. So I did. I really did. I implemented it immediately. And I think that's one of the biggest things. The biggest struggles we see out there is people read the book. They go, that's a great idea. And then they don't implement. And they Shelf help, I call it. Shelf yeah. help. <laughs> and they don't take those steps or they go Correct. to try and implement and they get stuck and then they don't know what to do and then they abandon it or that's right. they implement and the first two months are rough and they're like, well, this doesn't work and they give up. So all, right. all of those things are getting through that beginning curve of make it work, keep it mm -hmm. working and do that. So right. let's talk about that. How do you get somebody to have that hockey stick growth? Well, it really, for me, it comes down to why people hold themselves back from success in the first place. All those things that you just talked about are symptoms, you know, and everybody out there is talking about symptoms. And, and that, that's because a symptom means pain, right? So, uh, you know, the analogy I like to give is imagine if you have a toothache, right? If your toothache, you're like, if your tooth hurts, you're like, oh, my tooth hurts. Right. You're not necessarily thinking about what's causing it, but what do you do? You go to the dentist because, you know, you're like, ow, this hurts. <laughs> I want this pain to stop. Right. And then so the dentist looks at it. Now, imagine that. So here, here's what we have in, in this industry. I'm talking the personal business development industry, right, which is a multi-billion dollar industry. And there's all these fake gurus out there and everybody and their brother, you know, is a coach and whatever. Right. So here's what here's what this industry is like. They would look at you and they'd go, oh, yeah, yeah, you got a cavity. Next. <laughs> right. You're like, wait a minute. Uh, can you fix that? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm still in pain, buddy. Right. And so, and, oh, and then, then, then here's what they do. The next thing they do is they say, okay, yeah, sure. Here's some pain pills. All right. So take some pain pills and, and that way you won't feel the pain. And you're like, wait a minute. You didn't even address the cause of my pain. Right. The cause of my pain is there's something going on in there, a cavity or whatever it might be. Right. And it's like, can you fix it? And see, that's really why I got into this business 25 years ago, because I was so annoyed by it, because I was so frustrated. I'd spend all that money and all that time. And, and all they do is they give you surface level, you know, stuff that doesn't mean anything and it doesn't help. And so that's why, I've, that's why I've written 18 books, you know, all these books back here. I wrote all these because I, I wanted them. <laughs> I needed them and nobody else was writing them. So I had to write them myself. Anyway, so the point is that, you know, going back to that of why people do these things, it really, it, for me, and, and, you know, this is one of the reasons we get that hockey stick growth is head trash, head trash, which is the voice in your head that says, I can't do it because. Right. So you read the book, you know, whether it's one of my books or what's profit first or any any book, really, or any you know thing in in personal development, business development, making more money, whatever it might be, building your online business. Right. And th this is the point that I love to make. It's like if information was enough, everyone would be rich, happy and thin. Right. Because all you have mm -hmm. to do is go on YouTube and type in how to make money online, how to lose weight, how to have six pack abs, how to have happy relationship. There's 10 million billion kajillion things out there. So why isn't everybody rich, happy, and thin? The obvious answer is because information is not enough, right? It's not enough. We we are missing that inner part that I call it the inner game, right? And so that's one of the main reasons we see that and we get that hockey stick growth for our clients because we're we're actually fixing the problem. And and sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's like, ah, you know, but guess what? You know, we'll put you under. You're not gonna, it's not gonna hurt too bad. You know, and but it, it, isn't it better to actually fix the root cause than to just give you a pill and say, OK, you know, this let's mask the symptoms. That's what everybody's doing. And that's what makes our approach different. And I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned working with Profit First and the, the other programs that I do is when you mm -hmm. start to look at a business and the business owner, mm -hmm. you start to see what the problem is. OK, mm -hmm. is it a cavity? 
Is it something else? Like, where is the constraint in their business that's right. causing the pain? And for some businesses, it's okay. We don't have enough people calling us. We don't have enough leads. Right. For some businesses, it's well, I can't charge that much for this. Nobody <laughs> will pay me, right? So they're right. underpricing below what they need to to make a buck. Mm -hmm. For some businesses, they they created more overhead than they can carry mm. because they've they've grown the overhead before they've grown the sales. And so there's okay. a mismatch in there. Some it's debt. You know, you got a nice humming business, but oh my God, the debt payments are killing me from something mm -hmm. that happened in the past. That's right. Some it's personal lifestyle. Oh, okay. Your business is really well, but you're spending so much money in your personal life that you're starving your business because you're using it like a piggy bank. So you're, you're <laughs> taking out more than is there at the moment. Right. And it it takes a couple moments, but you can look and you can analyze it. Now, I can tell you if my tooth hurts, it's really hard for me to see in my mouth. Sure. But it's really easy for the dentist to look in my mouth That's and go, right. oh, there That's it is. Right. I see that. I know That's what right. that looks like and I know how to fix it. And so I think that's mm -hmm. a big part of it is is finding that. And I think you're very correct. One of the biggest things I have found is the people who are truly experts in the business of helping businesses are usually not well known because what they are not good at is marketing. They're good at what they do. And for most of us and what, you know, operations in the business, operations guys aren't marketers, right? Mm -hmm. They're really good at making your business hum, but right. they're just not marketing people. And I think too often we get sucked into the marketing instead of making sure we're making the right choices, which is what uh, you experience quite a bit of. Absolutely. You're, and that is one of the things I talk with people all the time about, which is that when you look at marketing and self-promotion versus coaching and teaching, they're very different skill sets. In fact, some would argue, and I would argue, they're, they're diametrically opposed in many cases. And so the point is, you know, the gurus that are taking up all the air, they're great at marketing and self-promotion. Look at me, look at me, and they're great at getting attention. Nothing wrong with that. But when you give them money, you find there's no there there. <laughs> and it's like, okay, yeah, you're, you're great. You're awesome. I, I need help. That's why I gave you money. Oh, well, you know, just be like me. And you're like, well, what if I'm not like you? You know, and so that's what I t talk about. I've been talking about this for many, many years, which is the difference between personality-driven success and system-driven success. Personality-driven success is exactly what it sounds like. It's about that person's, that guru's personality. Well, what if I don't have that personality, right? Which most people don't. You know, most people aren't out there, eh, whatever, you know? And so I guess you're out of luck. But you just gave them all your money. You know, so it's like, ah, oh, shoot. And I believe me, I learned this the hard way. I'm like, wait a minute. I just gave you all this money and you, you, you maybe gave me a one little thing here, but I mean, I certainly overpaid for that. You know, so that's why I, like I said, that's why I wrote all these books. That's why I developed my system because it's like, gosh darn it. I wish someone would have given me this a long time ago. You know, the checklist, the blueprints, the templates, the fill in the blank, the plug and play, the paint by numbers, because it's like, it's hard enough, you know, without a system. If you don't have a system, you are reliant on your personality. Well, what if you don't have, you know, that type of outgoing extroverted personality, which frankly, most people just don't. I don't. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a shy introvert. I'm a nerd, you know. And so to try to be like somebody else, like that guy, which I tried for years, you know, and it, it just it was an absolute failure. So, you know, that's why when you have a system, you're like, oh, the, let the system do the work. I mean, you know, to use another analogy, imagine if uh you know, you get on an airplane and the pilot goes, well, you know, um, I haven't really studied this, but, you know, I think it looks like fun. So let's have, you know, let's have some fun, guys. And like, hello, I think I want to get off now. You know, so we want a checklist. We want the blueprint. We want the templates, the, you know, just step by step. And it's that that's makes life easier and business a heck of a lot easier. 
So me playing Flight Simulator on my PC doesn't qualify me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think some would say it does, right? And that's what all the gurus are doing. Hey, I did this. Look at that. You know, like, isn't it funny that all the all the chat experts were clubhouse experts, you know, six months ago? And then before that, there was some other expert and there was some other expert before that. It's like, oh, my God, you know, it's I've been doing this for 25 years. The same thing, you know, just day in, day out and system, system, system. So, you know, when people when people follow the system, it does the work. And that's what's so nice is it's not dependent on your personality. And that frankly makes life a heck of a lot easier. And that's what I love about Profit First. I mean, here's the reality of the situation. You can go buy the book and you can implement. You don't need help. You can go listen to the first episodes three through 13 on this podcast. We add to the book. You can go implement this and do it yourself. You don't Mm -hmm. specifically need me. What I find is people get stuck in friction. Something Mm -hmm. goes wrong or they don't, they just don't keep the system going long enough and they don't just keep showing up, keep doing it, make it a habit and don't deviate. If you'll do that, it does work. And there are many people who have done it. And, but you've got to keep the system going. So in businesses, I love. When people create systems, but again, here it comes back to the same thing. And, and Gino Wickman talks about this in rocket fuel, right? In, in businesses, there's the visionaries. Those are the, the people that you talk about, right? They sell everything. And then there's the, the operator. There's the person who builds the systems, right? The f- number of operators out there and people who have that skill set is very small. So what happens to the business owner who needs to build systems, but isn't great at it? You have to find a system and plug (laughs) yourself into it. That's what I'm saying. I mean, let's give the classic example of Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak. There's your classic example, right? Visionary, big talker, greatest marketer in the world, some would say, and all that stuff. And you got Woz back there just working on his little things, you know. And they have both said this, you know, it's no secret that, you know, Jobs, when he was alive, he said there would be no Apple without Waz. And Waz, of course, says there certainly wouldn't be an Apple without Jobs. So, you know, it sucks when you have to do both. (laughs) You know, it's like we don't all have a Waz or a Jobs or, you know, whichever one you are. It's like, ah, sometimes we have to be Waz and Jobs. And it kind of sucks, you know. So you have to do both. You have to be you have to build those muscles. You know, for me, I'm definitely more of a was. I'm just a nerd. I'd rather just be back there, you know, putting all the little circuits in place and just, you know, in my laboratory, you know, and, and, you know, to be out there and be all self promotional and stuff, not comfortable at all for me at all. But I got to do it, you know, and for most people watching and listening, probably it is just you, you know, a lot of times. Now, as you grow and scale your company, you know, hopefully you get. You get the jobs and you get the was and you're like, ah, OK, good. I can do what I'm great at and you do what you're great at. We all make a lot of money. You know, that's you know, if that happens, that then you're in, then you're in a great position. But until that time, you know, you, you probably have to do both. And, you know, that's the point. You know, there's so many people out there that say, uh, you know, you got to do what you're great at and then outsource what you're not great at. Yeah, that's easier said than done, especially when it comes to marketing. That's why I paid all these clowns half a million dollars only to find out they can't teach them how to paper back. You know, and I'm like, I guess I'll just do it myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like, okay, that didn't work. So, you know, you, and there is definitely an argument to be made that marketing is more important, you know, than, than the doing of it. Because it's certainly obvious that there's a lot of people out there who aren't really very good and they're, they're making a lot of money. You you certainly want to be both, you know, but I always tell people the thing that sucks is when you see people dumber than you making a lot more money than you. That That's the sucky thing. So I'm going to challenge that. But before I do a quick comment, yeah, one of the reasons I partnered with Profit First to Mike Michalowicz is because he's a visionary. Yeah. And when I looked at how much time and effort I would have to put into building that and doing that and building a right. brand, I'm like, you know, it's so much easier to partner with Mike Definitely. Let him go be the visionary. Let him write the book. Let him go on tour. He just says, yeah, go go have Rocky help you implement. And I'm like, perfectly yeah. happy because I'm like you. I am that. I will say this, that most marketers, especially the type that you're talking about, and I've seen many of them in the behind the scenes, 
right? Hey, we just had a seven figure launch. That is awesome. How much did you spend? Seven figures. Right. Oh, so how much did you actually make? Nothing. Right. You spent all that time and effort and you look great and everyone's clapping and you got That's this, right. this achievement award. That's right. But at the end of the day, you didn't make any money. It's not, mm-hmm. it, you didn't keep it, which is, I think, what a lot of people don't realize because they spent Absolutely. it all renting the Lamborghini and, you know, borrowing Absolutely. the jet I, to I take the I call that picture. internet marketing <laughs> math. Internet marketing math. Yeah. Hey, I made seven figures. How much you spend? Uh, 7.1. I mean, you know, no. And so that's why, you know, for, with my clients, we, we talk about offense and defense. You know, it's, it's just like football, right? You got to have your offense, you got to have your defense. And there's an old saying in football, defense wins championships. What good is it if you made a million and you spent two million? Not, I mean, it's not that, what, what is the point here? You know, and like you said, yeah, you get on stage and, and you're like, oh, shoot, we didn't make, we lost money or we didn't make or whatever. So, you know, to me, when, when I, when I'm talking with, when I'm working with clients who are in a similar situation, I say, listen, we got, we got to get your defense on the field here. You got to start playing better defense because offense is great. Offense fills the seats, but defense wins championships. Defense makes you rich, meaning, and it's very simple. You live below your means and you spend below your means. Easier said than done, obviously. But, you know, that's why not many people are champions. So, you know, it does take getting the or putting in the right habits and, you know, taking out your head trash about money specifically. And there is a lot of head trash that people have around money. Uh-huh. Yes. It is. It's quite. Uh, Why do you think I wrote all these books? <laughs> <laughs> it is quite interesting. And and that yeah. was an eye opener for me because yeah. I've always come at it from a system standpoint to money. Like, OK, spend less than you earn right. and keep the gap as big as possible <laughs> and enjoy right. what you have. Yep. And as long as you can stay within in your means. Or below your means, so to speak, and right. and have a safety margin. No. Everything That's will right. be pretty good. And mm-hmm. when you have cash, opportunities present themselves. That's right. And they will. They have in the past. I think just because of what's happening in the world today, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to those who have cash in the future. The last ten years, cash has been flowing like there's no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that's going to happen or how much that's going to happen going forward. And the cost of it will be considerably more. Whereas business deals that look like a no brainer a year ago are going to look like this is losing money from day one. (laughs) So we'll see what happens. Who knows? But yeah, I think things are changing and you have to change with them. One of the things you talk about is start ugly. Is it okay to start ugly? How else can you start? Well, we can wait for perfection. Good luck with that. <laughs> Let me know how that goes. Um, yeah, I mean, that's why I share my story because, you know, I want people to realize I started over 25 years ago in a in a 300 square foot basement apartment with $800 in a book on HTML. So I had nothing, nothing. You know, I didn't know anything about marketing, sales. Uh, there was no Facebook, YouTube, social media. There was no blogs. I mean, it was, you know, the wild, wild west out there. And like I said, the tools were very rudimentary and really, really hard. And see, that's it's interesting because back, you know, back then when dinosaurs roamed the earth, it was it was harder, but easier, harder because the tools were hard. You had to friggin build a house with a a rock and some sticks. But because it was so hard, there were fewer people doing it. Well, now, because it's so easy, any idiot can put up a website and every idiot is. (laughs) And so the noise is just it's ridiculous. You know, and I always say we we don't live in the information age. We live in the information overload age. We pass the information age 20 miles back. So we're all on overload. So my one of the biggest things I work on with my coaching clients is focus. The number one complaint I get from clients is, Noah, there's so many distractions. How do I focus? And I've always been very, very good at focusing. I don't know why. That's just the thing I'm naturally good at. But What most people do who, when they're naturally good at something, they don't really are not able to teach it. I'm actually able to teach people how to focus. There is a methodology for doing that. And that's one of the reasons that we get hockey stick growth. I mean, like, uh, we had one client who his business was at four million a year doing, doing fine, but he'd been stuck at four million for four years, been plateaued there. And he, 
thrown hundreds of thousands of dollars at the problem, gone to all the gurus, all the seminars, everything, and it just, you know, plateaued. So I worked with him one-on-one for a year. In that one year, he went from being stuck at $4 million for four years to over $20 million in sales, hockey stick, $20 million. And one of the things that we helped him with was focus, you know? And I and talking about head trash for a second, I had another client, and I asked, I just asked him straight out. I said, his name is Charles. I said, Charles, how much do you think your head trash is costing you this year? In other words, if we don't fix this problem, if we don't fix this thing that's holding you back, how much do you think that's going to cost you this year? Without batting an eye, he said a million dollars. If I don't take out this trash that's in my head, <laughs> which he was aware of, and most people are aware of it, you know, if I don't take this out, it's going to cost me a million dollars. Easy. And I said, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, you, how about you give me 10% of that million and I'll find you that million dollars? Cause it's right there. It's hidden right there in your business, but you can't, you can't tap it. You know, it's, it's like you're digging a gold mine with a teaspoon. You know, it's, it's really, really hard. It's going to take you too long. So he paid me that. He paid me a hundred K, you know, to coach him. And in 10 months, we actually added over 1.5 million to his business. Hockey stick. All right. So for the people listening and watching, ask yourself, that question, if I don't take out this head trash, how much is it going to cost me this year? And how, how long am I going to keep paying that? So when you say that the number one problem is focus, mm-hmm. just like kind of in the simplest of terms, what is that like? What is the solution to that? Well, it's a multifaceted solution, number one. And number two, of course, it's different for each person. You know, we have we have checklists and templates and things like that. But one of the things I want people to realize is, We live in a world of infinite distractions, all right? So this has never happened in human history, right? So what at our fingertips, at every second, we have these instruments of infinite distraction. I'm holding up my smartphone here, right? We have at our fingertips every second is infinite distractions. Now, that's never been true in human history. Think about it. Never. I mean, when I was growing up, we had three channels and PBS. That was it. And if you move the rabbit ears, maybe you get channel 56 and channel 38 from Boston. I mean, that was about it. So... You know, now there are, I mean, what are there, 8 billion people on the planet? And basically all of us have a blog or a podcast or everything like that. So it's insane. And so the point is, how do we deal with this? Well, first of all, realize, number one, the social media companies want you to be addicted. They want you to be addicted. Why? So they can sell you stuff. So they make money by showing you ads. That's how they make money. You are the product. We are the product. All right. If you're on that platform, you are what they're selling. All right. So their job is to keep you addicted so they make more money. So sometimes just even realizing that helps people to kind of, <laughs> it's kind of like a splash of cold water on the face. Like, really? I didn't, I never thought of it that way. Well, hello. So maybe if you realize that you're paying them, even though you're not paying them, you're paying them with your attention which is your time, which can't be replaced. Okay, so that's just one simple thing that anybody can do to limit their screen time and say, oh my gosh, I just wasted 35 minutes of my life just mindlessly scrolling through social media. Maybe I could do something more productive that makes me money. Huh, great idea, you know? This doesn't have to be hard, but it kind of is hard though, because remember, these are all addictive. These are absolutely addictive. And they 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 have engineers, they have psychologists on staff trying to say, how can we make this more addictive? It's like the tobacco companies. I mean, it's exactly like that. So, yes. Are they evil? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Email is I, just I, as I will go addictive. before the Senate subcommittee and say, yes, they're evil. <laughs> Pound on the desk. Yeah. Email is just as addictive. We get stuck in rabbit holes doing things. We're focusing on the parts of the business that have no value. 20% of what we do produces 80% of the value. Exactly. So figure out where that value is coming from and ignore the rest of it and focus on what is most important and do that. And I I know a big part of what we do is accountability. You said you're going to do X. Did you do it? All right. How do we get it done? What what has to happen? And that's... Essentially, I uh, that was a big surprise for me that I didn't think I was in the accountability game, but I guess I am. <laughs> you said you're going to do it. Make it happen. Exactly. And we humans do more when we feel accountable to other humans. And so use that. 
use that facet of human psychology. Absolutely. Use it every day. You know, it's funny. I was at the gym yesterday mm -hmm. and I was uh, I was bench pressing and I finished my seventh or eighth rep and I stopped. Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know, if I had somebody over me right now, right. I would have done two more because right. I, I would have had the comfort that knowing that somebody's standing by here and making right. sure that I don't drop this thing on my head and kill myself. That's right. <laughs> and so That's having right. that there, I think, is a is a big, big part of it. Absolutely. You've written a lot of books. You've put out a That's bunch right. of work. If people would like to learn more about you, about the books, what's the best way for them to do that? You can get started with my book called Get Rid of Your Head Trash About Money. You can get this book for free at sendmeabooknoah.com. Easy to remember, sendmeabooknoah.com. And the book is free. We just ask you to cover the shipping. Um, and the other one I'll give you real quick is breakthroughwithnoah.com. These are all easy to remember, Breakthrough with Noah. And you can watch a 10-minute video training that I did on how I help my clients make more in just 12 weeks than they made in the last 12 months. So it's not like this long convoluted VSL or something. It's a 10 minute, you know, quick and sharp and really easy. And it's like, oh my gosh, people totally get it. And they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know I was holding myself back like this. And you'll see tons of case studies on there. So send me a book, Noah, and breakthroughwithnoah.com. And we'll put those in the show notes. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us today. My pleasure. Noah was on my other podcast, Richer Soul, on episode 308. And we went much deeper into his story and also about head trash. I'll put a show, link in the show notes if you're interested in learning more. I've said this before. Your business is a system and you need to understand and tweak it. Profit First is a cash flow system that will help you do that for your cash. Just like it helped Noah. Too often people get stuck and they don't ask for help. Why don't you just send an email to us? We don't bite. We don't even charge you for the email. Let me ask you a question. What's the one thing that's keeping you from focusing on what you should be doing and how do we eliminate it? Maybe it's social media, emails, constant fires in your business because you didn't systematize it. You didn't teach the people what they needed to do. All right. I know you're busy. It's not easy. But at the end of the day, these are the keys to your success in breaking through. As I always say, you don't need more resources. You need to be more resourceful. Remember to focus on the bottom line. If you'd like for us to be a part of your profitability journey, we have different programs available ranging from do-it-yourself to one-on-one -on -one coaching. Our course, The Profit Blueprint, teaches you everything you need to know to transform your profitability. There are three different tiers, ranging from DIY to done with you, so that businesses of all sizes can get the support that's best. Join the waitlist in the show notes to get more information and be a part of the next cohort. If you want a done-for-you service, you can hire us as your chief profitability officers. We only work with a handful of clients, so they all get our full attention. We work with business owners who have or are growing to half a million to 10 million in revenue. You can use the scheduling link in the show notes to get on our calendar for a good fit conversation to see if we're the right people to support you and how we can help you. This episode of the Profit Answer Man podcast is brought to you by smbpodcastnetwork.com. The network is a collection of podcasts and shows from around the internet, which focus on bringing you interviews with amazing guests who share actionable advice, ideas, and information for small and medium-sized business owners and entrepreneurs. Visit www.smbpodcastnetwork.com to find more great shows and easily subscribe to be notified of new episodes. It's a great way to discover quality content. If you've discovered us via the network, then I hope you enjoy today's show and will consider subscribing directly so you never miss our episodes. Remember to check out my other podcast, Richer Soul, where we talk about how to live the ultimate life and be the best business owner you can be. As we close out, let's repeat the mantra. Revenue is vanity. 
Profit is sanity and cash is king. Have an abundant and profitable week.